But we are not waiting. Nothing. We are going straight into the second correct. game on Metalopolis. Now, one thing to note, right after that big timing push, we saw that there was almost a thousand more minerals lost of units for Idra. That goes to show that MC is the amazing defensive player that has helped him mark those wins throughout the tournament. And it looks like MC one game away. We will see what happens. Game two has just now started between OGS MC and EG's Idra. Two of the most epic rivals in all of StarCraft II, or I would even say esports in general. In the bottom position, we have the man who is currently down 0-1, the Zerg from America, the last hope of USA. It is EG's Indra! And in the left position, not many like trash talk on the main stage, but OGS MC, one of the few who can always match his claims. If you would like him to close this series off, give a cheer for OGS MC! Once again, we do have MC throwing down that pylon on nine and is going to go ahead and scout straight south as it is on the GSTL map, which means there are no close locations and he uh, will be able to find Idra immediately. Once again, denying Idra of that fast hatchery, which I'm sure he would have got down. Going to have to get that spawning pool. Oh. And uh, then into that extractor. And uh, Idra is going to throw the overlord over now and check out the uh, the gateway timing. What time is it down? And it's actually down on 12, which is kind of fast. OGS MC known for doing extremely slight tweaks to his play to get in slightly more optimal positions. And once again, we see, oh, a pool does get blocked. Idra now having to plant down a pool on attempt number two. Will he take that characteristic fast gas, or will he just go for the expand when he can? No gas, generally a signal that Idra wants a faster third. Mm. MC. Did he cancel his gateway on accident? Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't watching. Uh, that's really interesting. Wow. Um, I have no idea what that was. Either way, the crowd is going to give a cheer. I mean, Idra <laughs> must be very confused to have seen a gateway cancel. I'm not building a gateway. Ha! I am. My opponent is confused. I know. As are we at home and here in Sweden right now. We see OGS MC in the south planting down a pylon because, hell, if you accidentally cancel the gateway, no reason to worry about wasted minerals at that point. And there is the queen popping out. Idra, per usual, has great timing. And uh, Idra must be very confused about this because it messes up the timing for pretty much everything. Because um, obviously the cybernetics core is going to be late. And uh, that's really weird. And uh, so he is going to go ahead and scout that the second gas has been taken. Uh, finally, Idra pulling down some links to go ahead and get rid of that pylon. And uh, MC going to go ahead inside the base of Idra if possible. Oh, no, links do deny that. And uh, he needs to get that pylon down ASAP so he can get that expansion up. And it looks like the expansion will be going down right now. And Idra now just having enough for Zergling speed as well. Getting his second queen up. Will his speed begin production? Mm. We have actually not yet seen Idra get the Zergling speed yet, which is extremely uncharacteristic of him to wait this long. And there it does go down. I would say that that is perhaps a little bit of an accident mm. by Idra. Not a giant mistake, but still unintentional. And uh, the Chrono Boost had to be focused on the Gateway a little bit heavier than normal because it was late. Had to get that Zealot out to block that choke point between the, uh, the Cybernetics Core and the edge of the ramp. And a uh, Chrono Boosted Sentry also being popped out. And what do we see here? We see a Twilight cancel very early on here by MC. Oh, is MC going to go for a big Blink Stalker play or will he? Be trying to do the same Dark Templar build that brought Hux such huge success. We see... Uh-oh, there is one gateway going down. Will he be building gateway number two? There it is. Still no ability to tell quite yet what will be arriving. We see Idra. He's going again for this Roach early pressure. This is a style that he tried against OGS MC at last MLG and ended up having a miserable quick loss. Now that Twilight Council is down, he is saving up the money, and there it is. The Dark Shrine, will Idra be prepared, or will he suffer another quick loss with this timing all-in attack? And this is uh, definitely a Team Liquid OGS build that has been created in that house. And uh, the position of the Dark Shrine is really smart here, because the Overlords are all on the outskirts of his base, and it looks like Idra is fallen into the same trap that Moon fell into earlier today against Huck. 
And this is going to be pretty bad for Idra and could see him out of the tournament. But he is getting an Evo Chamber. And there That's, it is. Ooh, that could really change the game. We do see that that Dark Shrine is halfway done. And look at this. Idra has pulled units out of the gas. This is not an all-in. This is a straight early pressure build. He is devoting his resources back to making drones now. He sees that the sentry count is low. He will have to build himself an early spore crawler. But he is more than prepared to do so. This conspicuous looking pylon placement going to be geared up to do a little bit of pressure. And there it is. Spore crawler wow. at the front. Spore crawler in the main. Idra is so smart. He very well could have watched the games from Huck's perspective earlier, but wow, that is amazing play there by Idra and can continue to pressure the front of the base though. And uh -oh. the DTs are being warped in uh -oh. and they're all going. He might be able to kill off the pylon in time, but no. Oh! oh forcing a cancel! And at the front, we see the Spore Crawler is up. We do have one DT starting to make its way in. The Zerglings greet it. Hello, DT! Knocking him back, and now Idra pulling back to a retreat. MC at the disadvantage. Wow, and eight more drones being produced. He's trying to get rid of the Evo Chamber, but that Spore Crawler is going to be great. He gets oh! the surround as well. Idra trapping that Dark Templar, taking it out. Wow. I still cannot believe how Idra identified that build just because of the sentry count there. Seeing only three, realizing where is your gas gone? And then completely transitioning from that all-in style, moving back into drones. Excellent, excellent play from Idra, and that is what we need from him. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and build a little bit of a hidden expansion here because of the DT threat. He's going to build it all the way on the right-hand side here, hidden away wow. from MC. This is a little bit unlike Idra to try to sneak an expansion over to that right side, but I mean, at this point in time, he is at 71 food. OGS MC is down to just 50. There's the layer popping up right now. Idra taking all of his gas geysers. And this is actually a very sophisticated expo timing. This isn't just him saying, man, I hope he doesn't scout me. This is Idra knowing that he has to look like he's going for a fast overseer. How else could a Zerg hope to move out to take a third base? That's what OGS MC is banking on. In a very short while, MC will scout this. And when he sees no expansion, he will anticipate that Idra is on two bases and perhaps miscompensate. Exactly, and uh, Macro Hatch is going down for Idra on the so natural. Smart. And uh, we do have the plus one started very early. A few roaches are being added in now, too. We just look at the unit counting station for a brief second 54 drones versus 33 probes. A large, large advantage uh, to Idra because of that early adaption. And now the Overseer is being made, as you said. And uh, where is it? <laughs> Found him right by the ramp. The Overseer is morphing in. Idra can begin to start scooting around the map. We do see all the key components to a good defense. The speed for the Roach. We see the Burrow also being researched at the natural expansion. The third base is up for Idra. Spreading those Zerglings around, we'll be able to check out that top base. But keep in mind, the longer the game goes on, the more MC will equalize. Think about... Uh, 70 versus 40 food and now 100 versus 70 food that same difference of 30 but doesn't feel as big because MC's army is getting rapidly stronger and stronger by the second overseer marching directly in we'll see every bit of tech in MC's base and we do have a DT going towards that base location on the right hand side will the spine crawler finish in time though I'm not sure this could be very dangerous for Idra, and uh, he might, well, I'm sure that oh. MC will go straight for that Spore Crawler. Idra might be able to get us around with the drones, but might take a lot of hits here. Oh, it looks like MC was on a regular old move, and there he is. He sees that there is this Dark Templar. MC going to do a few little poke attacks, but he will have to retreat. The Queen pretty upset about that loss. Going to try to chase it down for a little bit. MC trying to find any bit of damage that he can pull off, but the Roaches are going to arrive. Whoa, Idra. 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 Oh, no. And it looks like taking a lot of damage. Mm. There was a significant amount of drones killed. Those are the sort of advantages that MC does need, but we do see that this plus one range attack is done. The macro hatches up. All the units being pulled back and drones rallying in. Meanwhile, OGS MC trying to scramble to get a third base of his own. And uh, Idra falling behind in upgrades again. Needs to be starting that plus two missile attacks. And uh, we have MC catching up. Has begun that plus two. And Blink just about to be finished. Added on a few more gateways. It looks like he will be going for a plus two timing attack. He doesn't really want to go and get that third base yet. Idra could be in a lot of trouble here. But he does have board roaches. He will have ton and close very, very shortly. Uh-oh. Looks like Idra taking a page out of Sen's book. 
Moving forward with many roaches. They almost have the tunneling claws. We see nothing but roaches in production. Overseers rally to the front lines. MC going to try to advance forward. Might be a big mistake as the tunneling claw is about to finish. And there's the burrow. Idra looks like he is trapped, but there he is. Now he can move underneath those force fields. But MC got a couple of key kills. But look at Idra, 172 food. MC, 109. That's such a big food difference. And now Tonin Claws is going to pop up under the oh! force fields. And another great burrow play by Idra, wasting all the time. And it looks like MC trying to do the best he can to get that critical stalker count up. But we see a very nice contaminate by Idra using these unorthodox units from Zerg. But MC with too many stalkers. Wow, pushing Idra back. Plus two has finished for MC. And oh. that is the critical difference. So many roaches losing now. Idra scrambling back, needs to get that hydrogen up. Is trying to get there, did contaminate that uh, immortal from coming out, as you said. But it is now about to be finished. And now MC on the counter attack, 160 food versus 115. Does Idra have enough to defend against this? Only plus one roaches versus plus two. Blink Stalkers. This is the huge moment of this game. If Idra can defend this, he is almost guaranteed to win. He has blocked the third base. He has a third up of his own. MC is essentially committed to only Stalkers. Another Contaminate. One Immortal trying to advance to the front lines. Here come the Roaches. Can Idra pull it off or will he crumble again? No, he is carefully pulling back, waiting for the Hydralis to arrive. This is going to be a nail-biting finish. MC is committed to winning with this attack and with these Overseers here to contaminate. He cannot reinforce as quickly. Where are the Hydras? They're soon coming in and there are so many Stalkers. In come the Hydras. This is it. Hydras going for it. And Idra rushing forward, trying to prevent any of those stalkers from retreating properly, but great blink micro going on by MC. Idra's food count getting smaller and smaller by the second. MC has too many stalkers and takes Idra out of the tournament again. Idra playing so well, but MC always wow. seeming to have an answer. It makes you wonder. What would have happened if Idra had waited five more seconds until that tunneling claw had finished up? An extremely close series. OGS MC going 2-0, knocking out Idra. The best games I've seen Idra play in this tournament was not enough. Wow, Idra again being knocked out by his arch nemesis, MC. And I can't believe that. Unfortunately for Idra, another tournament lost to him. And no not taking anything away there. MC played very smart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Really, look, if you think about it from the beginning of that game, MC was at such a disadvantage, yet still managed to come back and take that mm -hmm. game away from Idra. I mean, you think about the fact that we just saw Sen crush Sase in the last round game that we casted, but OGS MC 2 0 Sen, of course, capable of doing the same mm -hmm. against Idra. And even though the games were extremely close, and MC seemed to be playing from behind, managing to pull out a win. So that means that we will have MC advancing to the round of eight. Wow. And that's going to be an interesting game. He will be going on to play against Bonner, Bomber, or Hatsuops. So. I would like to just thank all of you for having tuned in all day long. The Apollo and I have been casting bright and early since 10 a.m. And we'll be back tomorrow to bring you more Round of Eight action. Tomorrow is the final day of DreamHack Summer 2011. I'm Day9. And I am D Apollo. Day9TV.blip.tv for all the matches that you missed once again. For any of you Americans who just woke up, Day9TV.blip.tv. Tune into those archives, because for now, we're out. The fast light of protection. E7 Nob 32 antivirus gives you less lag and more drag. For your Windows, Mac, or Linux computer.